Welcome to the CAD Office Training Guide Series for F.Connect. I am Joe Brenner, Lead Structural Engineer at WSP USA. Today I'll be going through the OpenBridge Modeler Training Volume 1, Introduction to Model-Centric Design. In this series of videos, we'll be taking you step-by-step -step through each exercise from the guide. In this session, we will go through Chapter 5, Exercise 5.3, and specifically we'll be showing how to create an abutment, pier, and the templates associated with both of those elements, as well as creating bearings. Let's begin. The exercise 5.3 completed view. As always, just to show you where we are headed in this exercise. So I'm just going to rotate around. You can see that we have our deck barriers and beams completed in previous exercises and you also now see the abutment end vent and pier vent shown. So let's jump into the exercise and create these substructure units for our model. Here we have our 5.3 begin .dgn file open. And you can see again uh, that we have our deck barriers and previous exercises and videos. So now we're going to go ahead and look at adding our substructure units. We're going to start with our end vents. So the first thing we have to do in this particular case is look at our substructure templates. We discussed the superstructure templates in previous videos. And in this particular case, we have modified the substructure templates in order to streamline the training um, and show you a few of the inputs here, but also just, um, again, as a beginning training, introductory training, have those values already populated, pre-populated for you. So in order to import those templates, we're gonna go to our utilities tab and then we're going to select under our import export group there is a templates drop down here and we are going to import our superstructure or excuse me our substructure templates so once that comes up we are going to select our substructure templates this is included in the data set files that you downloaded are able to download from the FDI CAD services website so we're going to select that in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and select our F dot training abutment template. So once that is selected, we're going to click open. And here we can select our substructure templates that we want to import. We only have one included here. And that is the F dot M bent training model model one. So we select that and we click import. And now our NVENT template has been imported into our library. So if we look at our abutments, again, we're looking at pile caps here. We have our F dot templates. And now we have our F dot NVENT model here. So that's what we're going to use for our training. So now that that is imported, we are ready to place our abutments. So under the Home tab, we're going back to the Home tab and our Substructure group. You can see we have several icons and tools listed here. And we're going to search for our Place Abutment tool, which looks like this. So as we select that, you see that we get a Place Abutment dialog box that pops up. And the first input similar to our previous uh, placement of components and bridge elements, we have our template selection. So now we're going to navigate to the template that we just imported. And we're going to go ahead and select that. Some of the other inputs here, there is this is not a, an integral abutment. So we're going to leave that unchecked. In this particular case, we are going to use a horizontal offset, again, because everything is based off that centerline uh, alignment. 
and we have dual structures here. So in this particular case, our horizontal offset is going to be negative 28 feet for our end bent units. And this information can be found in your training manual as well. We don't need any longitudinal offset. We're setting that um, right at our support line. We are going to check, conform the back wall with deck top. So that will um, basically move our, uh, our back wall to be to fall in this particular case. Uh, we're not going, we're going to leave the apply skew to silence unchecked as well as our edit elevation constraints. Uh, for this particular case, we don't need to use those inputs. This is our beginning abutment, so our orientation we're going to leave as start. This is our abutment one. We also have our cap length adjustment. We're going to leave that as none because our inputs are uh, specific to this particular case. We are going to modify our materials. These materials have been pre-populated in the workspace. So we have all of our F dot materials here that we can select. So in this particular case, we're going to scroll and look for substructure concrete. This is by name. So I'm scroll down to the, all the way down to the bottom. So we have our substructure concrete, generic substructure concrete, which we will use here. We're going to select that. We're going to select that for the cap and the column. We don't really have a column here, um, but uh, to be safe and just to make sure we're staying consistent um, with what OpenBridge Modeler calls a column and a stem, we're going to keep that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pre-populate that as well. Our footing, same thing. We're going to use substructure concrete, select. And then for our pile material, going to go ahead and use the 18 inch carbon driven plum. So again, all of these are pre pad or pre populated in our workspace to use for materials. So now that we've added all those, those look good. We're not going to worry about the build order at this point, as mentioned in previous videos. And also, we are always going to check our feature definition to make sure that we have the correct one selected. So here you can see all of our substructure feature definitions have been shown here. So there's, there's quite a few um, compared to other elements that we've gone through so far. And you can see we have an end bent with concrete pile. So that's one we want to make sure is selected. And we could change this uh, prefix. If we want to call it end bent one or abutment one, we can do that, but we're going to leave that as a, a, a generic name prefix for now. So we look, looks like all our inputs are correct. It's asking us to select the port support line. So we're going to go and select support line one. It's going to move my dialog box out of the way here and select the correct support line following our prompts. And again, these are on your screen uh, when you move to the window and also on the bottom left corner of the screen. So now it's telling us uh, data point to continue. We do not want to edit our elevation constraints at this point. We're going to say no. You can see here, both in our plan view and our 3D view, you can see that our abutment has been created. So one thing we are going to change is we are going to add a vertical back wall vertical offset. So in order to do that, we have to go back into our properties. As I mentioned, there are multiple ways to get the properties. We can hover over our element and click the properties tools here. We can also come up to our home tab and under primary group, select our properties tool. So now I'm going to select our end bent. 
branch and we are going to change our back wall or vertical offset from deck top. In this particular case we're going to use minus one for that minus one foot. And this allows uh, to move the back wall down to accommodate the approach slab that we will be cre creating in the next video. To do that you can see that our back wall now has been offset below our deck one foot. So it still follows it still follows the deck cross slope but just moves it moves that top of that down to accommodate our approach slab. Next we are going to create our pier using a very similar process. So I'm just going to zoom out here rotate a little bit. So we're going to go through the same process to import our peer template that we have pre-populated values for our template here for the training purposes. So under our utilities tab and under our import export we're going to go ahead and find our templates. And this is our import export template. We're going to import substructure templates again. In this case, uh, it may come back to the exact same folder here that we want. If not, we can navigate to this. This information is also in your training manual under this exercise 5.3. Here we have uh, our F dot training peer template. This is again under our pile bent. We're going to look down. So we have an f.peer. This is our particular dimensions here that we're going to use. So we're going to select that and hit import. Now we can just check to make sure that that is now in our library. If we select under our library group our peer templates. So I mentioned this is a pile bent group. You can say we do have some pre populated uh, default substructure templates and here is our peer template that we just imported particularly for our training exercise which already has the dimensions of the pile cap and the pile locations set. There are plans to create an advanced training module and training guide and in that we will go into more details on the particular substructure templates and how to modify and create your own. Again, for this introductory training manual, we have this pre-populated and now it is in our library. So we're going to exit out of that, go back to our home tab, and under our substructure group, we're going to look for peer. So place peer, and this is the icon and the tool we want to use here. So we're going to select that with the left mouse click and we get a place peer dialog box that pops up. As with all of our placing of element tools, the first thing we need OBM is a template based program here. So we're going to select our pile bents and navigate down to the template we just imported. Once we have that selected, we will hit select. You can see that populates the data there. Again, this is not an integral peer. We do have a horizontal offset. It's the same as our end bent, so we're going to use minus 28 feet for that. In this case, we are going to use the cap length adjustment. We're going to go ahead and say adjust our peer template by the deck width. So that will cut off our templates, our, our peer, excuse me, our peer cap at the edges of our deck. We're not going to edit our elevation constraints. We do not have a skew, so we're not going to select apply skew to the solids. If we did have a skew on our structure, this would automatically um, skew the ends of the structure to match our deck edge instead of um, be normal to the um, center line of bearings. Now we are going to go through and select the same substructure concrete materials for our materials, cap material, column material, and footing material. And 
And for our pile material, we have the 18 inch carbon, carbon driven plum. We can select that. We're not going to worry about build order at this point. Now for our feature definition, you can see end bent with concrete piles has been pre-populated. We're going to go ahead and select pier with concrete piles. So once we do that, you can see the name prefix does change the pier as well. So now that we have our inputs complete, we're going to look at our prompts and it's asking us again to select the support line. We're going to select support line two, which is our pier one location. It says reset to end. So we are going to go ahead and reset. And in OBM, that is a right mouse click. So I'm going to right mouse click to reset. We're not going to worry about editing our elevation constraints at this point. So we're going to go ahead and give it a data point, which is a left mouse click in OBM anywhere on the screen. Now you can see our peer, peer one has been populated in our model, both in our left and right view. And we'll rotate around there, show you just a little bit more of the element there. And as I zoom in, you can see, you can probably notice right away that there's something missing and that is the bearing. So now, we are going to go ahead and create our bearing elements for our model. So to add our bearings, we're going to navigate to the Home tab and go to the Substructure group. And you can see our Place Bearing tool looks kind of like a wheel with, with spokes here, but we're going to go ahead and select that. And we get our place bearing dialog box. And this one is, is pretty involved. There's a lot of inputs here. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Again, in the training manual, you'll find much more information and detail about each one of these inputs. We also have in the manual under the create bearing elements in exercise 5.3 we also have all of the inputs here that i'm going to place here so first it's asking for cube width which in our case is one foot two to depth which is along the alignment of the beam That is 10 inches. Our cube height, so the thickness of our pad in this case is two inches and nine sixteenths. Put that in, make sure that takes, that looks good. And in this case, our orientation, we're gonna leave as with the pier. We can also, if we have a skewed structure, we can orientate, orient that with the girder. We're going to go ahead and leave the has pad or plate, uh, grout pad or bevel plate. We're going to leave that unchecked. We're also going to leave has bearing seats unchecked. And we're going to select our path. So this orients the beam. This is the offsets from the support lines. So we have the back. This is in case we have two bearing lines, such as the pier and we have two lines of beams simply supported beams coming in so in this particular case we're going to use a back offset of minus 11.5 inches it's a good lesson here that you make sure as you're putting these inform this information in to use your colon to make sure you get the feet and inches correct so our head, our head station, we're going to use an offset of 11.5 inches. Positive. Uh, we don't have a powder plate in this case, so we're going to leave that blank. So for our bearing material, we are going to navigate to our miscellaneous tab. Here we have our materials that are part of our workspace here. And we're going to navigate down to neoprene bearing pads. 
Once that is selected, we're going to hit select. And also for our bearing seat material, we're going to go ahead and hit the ellipsis here and navigate to our substructure concrete material. And then once that is selected, we're going to hit select. We're going to move beyond our build order. And we're going to just make sure our feature definition is what we want. In this case, we have neoprene pads, as I mentioned before. So we're going to leave that as neoprene composite for our feature definition. So now that we have this information complete, we are going to go back. And I mentioned not, we're going to leave this bearing seat, has bearing seats checkbox unchecked for now. But now we're going to go back and check this information so we can walk through this. So we're not going to model a step cap. We're going to just do our bearing seats here. And this information, again, is in your training manual. But we're going to use a minimum, minimum seat thickness of 4 inches, matching our standards. Now we're getting into the dimensions of our beam seat. And this takes a little bit of orientation and sometimes trial and error to figure out which dimensions are in which direction. Again, there's more information that's included in our training manual for each of these dimensions. We're going to go ahead and populate this. So our D1 is 11 inches. Our D2 is 11 and a half inches. Our seat width W1, we're going to use 1 foot 1 inch as well as W2. So these are the width, the pier or end bent. And our D is our dimension uh, depth. So that would be along the beam lines in our case. And again, we're going to leave that seat orientation with the pier as we don't have any skew. And there's no need to modify that. So now all of our inputs look correct here. And we're going to follow our prompts. So it says select support line. And we're going to select both our support line 1 and support line 2 in this particular case to add bearings on both our end bent and pier that we just created. And you can see as I selected that, you get a, a preview of where these bearings are going to be placed. So if I zoom out, you can see that glowing on the uh, end bent. And if I zoom in here on our pier, you can see that we actually have two sets of bearings that are going to be created. And you can see that also here with that orange line being placed on either side of our pier based on our inputs, our pier center line, I should say. So once that looks good, we're going to reset with a right mouse click. And then we're going to just walk through. It's going to make sure we have our path, our back, and our head offsets the way we would like them. And now it's recreating. It's creating our bearings, but also recreating our beams um, and our substructure units to get them at the right elevations based on this input for our pads. And now you can see that not only our bearings have been created but also our beam seats and our substructure units and bents, and in this case the pier, have been modified to make sure we keep those minimum, um, the minimum bearing seat dimensions and input that we get. And all offsets are correct. We can go and just check that our end bent also has been created here. see that it has. Thank you for joining me today for the CAD Office series for F.Connect. This was exercise 5.3 of the OBM Intro to Model Centric Design Guide. And in the next video, we will move on to chapter 6 and discuss plans development.